the comedy is the dream. The teaching is like the side gig. It should be reversed, but that's how much I love comedy. Uh, but I have some other things that, if this doesn't work out, I have some other ideas. Business ventures. Not a joke. This is not a joke section of the show. I'm just going to do my pitch. This is a great opportunity. And if, you're, in, if you, you're intrigued, come talk to me after the show. It's simple, simple experiment here. <clears throat> so I took my daughter a long time ago to this birthday party at this place called Build-A-Bear. You guys heard of this place? <laughs> the concept is simple. The kids, they come in and they build their toy. They build the bear. They learn valuable lessons like, I don't know, how to cut out the middleman. I don't know, but kids love this store. <laughs> so I have an idea. I'm gonna get a store similar to Build-A-Bear, right? And I'm gonna call it, you ready? You ready, sir? All right. <laughs> I'm gonna call this store Catch and Dress a Squirrel. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hear my pitch, I'm not done. In this store, I got like 30 or 40 wild squirrels just running around, all right? Woo, a tail got me. And you have fun, bring your kid, you pay a small fee, and I'll give you like a bucket and a stick, all right? <laughs> And you go get one. Get him in the bucket. Trap him. Have fun. Bond with your kid. That's phase one. Get him in the bucket. Fair warning, though, they hate buckets. Phase two <laughs> is you bring him up to me at the counter and listen to this. I got a bunch of outfits. Little squirrel outfits. I got, like, astronaut squirrel, basketball playing squirrel, French maid squirrel for the fellas. I don't know. I got it all. I don't judge. But this is the part where I lose investors. Squirrels, I don't know if you knew this, ma'am, they just don't willingly like, mm -hmm, put on a jean jacket. <laughs> they don't, you know. <laughs> so I gotta find a way to calm them down, relax, and don't worry, the kids don't see this. I take the squirrel in back, and you know, I punch it in the face, I knock it out, and then they're much easier to get dressed, right? And then I bring them out to him, like, here you go, here's uh, Elvis Presley squirrel, uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best Elvis squirrel you've ever seen. You've ever seen. I'm going to put it out there. But for legal reasons, I do have to issue the fallen warning. Eventually, this hunk of burning love, he will wake up. And if you thought he was mad before when he was in the bucket, you wait till he wakes up and he's got sideburns stapled to his face. The glue doesn't work. Some with the fur. I can sense kind of a divide in the room. Well, guess what? Whether you're on board or not, the process has already started. Back home, I've already released 14, 15 squirrels back in the wild, fully dressed. To get people talking, it's called advertisement. And you guys think I'm being a jerk, I'm actually helping the squirrel image. Because how many times have you hit a squirrel with your car, you're like, big deal, dumb squirrel, high five, Ugh. But good luck sleeping at night knowing you just hit Abraham Lincoln squirrel. <laughs> He freed the black squirrels. <laughs> squirrels in the bird feeder, we hate that, right, honey? Damn squirrels in the bird feeder again. Oh wait, he's got a police uniform on. Uh, he's probably got a warrant, carry on, sir. I didn't see your handcuffs on your little belt. Cute little belt. <laughs> Come talk to me after the show, bring your checkbooks. Uh, Comedy is the dream, though. That's why this is a big, this is cool. This is a really big deal for me, but that's what I want to do. And the thing I love best about comedy is meeting people, like on the road, when you travel and stuff. I like that. I was recently doing a show in Des Moines, Iowa. I'm not trying to brag, it's the capital. Uh, <laughs> but I stopped at a gas station to get a cup of coffee, and I'm waiting in line, and the lady in front of me did not know this lady. She bought my coffee. And all she said to me was, pay it forward. You, pay this forward, young man. You. And I know what to say, and then finally I spoke up. I was like, I also need gas. Is that part of the deal? Like, no, no. <laughs> Ruined her day. <laughs> I'm a coffee guy. I like coffee. We get coffee fans out there. I like coffee. I don't like, I don't like the Starbucks, though. Too corporate. Too corporate, right? They have their own system, the Vente, Tall, Grande. I don't use it. I'm not going to be controlled by a corporation. <laughs> And I have my own system. It's easy to figure out. If I ever happen to go to a Starbucks, I'll use my system. I'll be like, 
Can I get a hazelnut latte? And when they're like, what size do you want? What size do you want? I'm like, just give me a Papa Bear. Give me one Papa Bear hazelnut latte, please. Yeah, just give me the Papa Bear. Yeah, give me the Papa Bear. Give me the Papa. It's ironic, though, because one time I took a sip of the Papa Bear, way too hot. Good, couple of readers in here, nice. Uh, that's the cutest joke I've ever written. Like, that was my closer. Now I gotta keep going. Whenever I do travel, this is kind of weird, but I look for spooky things. Like ghosts, real stuff. Not the fake stuff, I like the real ghosts. Like a lot of comics when they travel, they try to get laid or like score drugs. I look for ghosts. Like I'm not gonna lie, the drugs help, but I like ghosts. <laughs> I just got done reading this book on actual haunted places in the Midwest. It's got like churches, mansions, cemeteries, right? But this is weird. According to this book, in West Union, Iowa, there's a haunted Hardee's. <laughs> Not the traditional haunt, right? But I'm thinking maybe Hardee's should take advantage of that. Maybe tweak their slogan around a little bit. Like, hello, welcome to Hardee's. We have food. You know that. But now we have a ghost. <laughs> Finally, two reasons to poop your pants. Because <laughs> the food's not good there. <laughs> And then this never fails. You know my go-to restaurant? Wherever I go, I just always go to a Subway. Like, I know these. I can stay here and catch my breath for a little bit, all right? I have one impression for you guys. I don't do a lot of impressions. This is my impression of somebody who works at Subway when you ask for a little mayonnaise. Hold on, wait, ma'am. Somebody that works at Subway when you ask for a little mayonnaise. <laughs> You're gonna get mayonnaise, people. I figured out how to get a little mayonnaise at Subway. You asked for no mayonnaise. You're still gonna get a little squirt. Like, I don't want any mayonnaise on my sandwich, please. Let's do it, try to squeak it in there. They put a lot of mayonnaise on their sandwiches. This is no joke. I was at a Subway maybe a month ago and I ordered my sandwich. And it was a young kid working the counter. I'm like, look, buddy, I don't want any mayonnaise. Just, I want my sandwich, no mayonnaise. And he was like. <laughs> I was like, no, no. I had to reach around the sneeze guard, no. And I swear to you, he turned around to a camera behind him. mad at first, but then I looked at my sandwich, spelled in the mayonnaise, it said, help me, something's going on. <laughs> I love to perform, I think it stems from an early age. For instance, when I was in the third grade, we had show and tell every Tuesday, and that was a chance for me to kind of get up in front of the class. Uh, but here's the thing, guys. I grew up poor, so I never really had anything good. Like, I remember one Tuesday, I was like, hello, everybody, my name's Chris. Here are some acorns. <laughs> There's seven of them. One doesn't have a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there, that's the same reaction I got in the classroom. <laughs> when I, did you feel that? Oh my gosh. And we had a kid in my class, we'll just call him Kevin Barnes, and he had a geode rock. You ever see one of those things? Oh, they're mystical, they're, they look like diamonds, they're beautiful. And he would bring that stupid rock every Tuesday. Like, I was being original. Like, I remember one Tuesday, I brought a snakeskin. Are you listening? I brought a snakeskin! I'm like, ladies and gentlemen, we all know what snakes are, but did you know they wore coats? They don't have arms. 
And it got quiet in the class. And I heard someone in the back, they were like, is, is Kevin gonna bring that rock? I'm like, shut up, Philip, why won't you die? <laughs> and it got so bad that one Tuesday, I'm like, I'm done. I can't compete with Kevin, that stupid rock. And I remember the teacher was going around the classroom, right? And I was like, nope, not today. But as she got close, I'm like, Chris, you'd love to perform. You'd love to perform. But I didn't bring anything. So this is what I came up with, you guys. I tore out a piece of paper, and I started to fold it, because I was going to do one of those origami cranes. But as I'm folding it, that's when I realized, those are hard. If you've never done an origami crane, I don't know why I just thought I could master origami. <laughs> so finally, she calls me, and I'm like, hey, everybody, what's up? <laughs> Chris Schlichting here, snakeskin guy from last Tuesday. Here's a piece of paper. <laughs> but here's the thing, you guys. Everybody went nuts. They were clapping for me. They were cheering. It was the best day of my life. I don't know why, but I was loving it. It was great. And then I remember as I walked back to my desk, I see Kevin. You can be Kevin, all right? He was mad. Oh, he was holding his rock. He's like, Ugh. And that's when I figured it out. I got real close to Kevin. And I whispered in his ear, paper beats rock. 